My dad passed about three days before my 21st birthday. He suffered from mental illness and unfortunately he lost his battle. However, the more that I reflect on his life and the opportunities that I now have, I can reflect back and realize that death doesn't truly have to be scary. For a while, I suffered with this irrational fear of death and it wasn't enough to cause me like any anxiety or depression. But it did cause me to reflect to just not think about dying, how I'm going to die, when I'm going to die. And I realized that it's not required to have an illness or a disease to be afraid of dying. Dying can be scary. And the more that I did research, I realized that there may be a potential cure for this fear. It's not a new yoga position that I learned last week. And it's not this new therapy that's brand new. It's psychedelic drugs. I'm here to persuade you on why psychedelic drugs should be legalized, not only because of their medical benefits, but because of their ethical considerations. After hours and hours and hours of research into what a psychedelic drug is and the potential benefits that it can have on your life, I feel as though I'm credible to talk to you about this. My hope is that after listening to me talk, not only will you become smarter on what a psychedelic drug is, but more knowledgeable into the benefits and effects that psychedelic drugs can have on you and your loved one's life. First, I'd like to take a look at the problem. Next, we'll take a look at the cause of this problem. Then we'll take a look at a potential solution. And finally, I'm going to address the opposition and prove to you why they're wrong. According to the American Addiction Center, a psychedelic drug is a group of substances that change or enhance sensory perceptions, thought processes, and energy levels. They can be derived from either plants or chemicals. They are known as hallucinogens or hallucinogenic drugs. Now that we know what a psychedelic drug is, let's take a look at the problem. Psychedelics are illegal, and they have been since 1970. However, in 1966, when the ball started rolling to make psychedelic substance illegal, by, in, by President Johnson, he signed the Drug Abuse Control Act in 1966 to make psychedelic drugs a crime. Now, you could be fined and you could be thrown in jail. However, you would not have a criminal record and you would not have a felony for consuming or possessing psychedelic substances. It wasn't until President Nixon took office that he piggybacked off of President Johnson and signed the Controlled Substances Act, making consuming or possessing a psychedelic drug a federal crime. According to Elizabeth Hartney, she's a psychologist, professor, and the director for the Center for Health Leadership and Research, she said this, making something illegal does not limit its use, but rather increases the risk of harm. And I like to think about the prohibition of alcohol that happened in the early 1920s and continue on for many, many years. Just because you make something illegal does not mean that people are going to blatantly obey and realize that, you know what, this is illegal, we shouldn't do it. And actually, it's quite the opposite. You make something illegal and the need to have that is even greater. Many riots and deaths occurred during the prohibition. Psychedelics are also classified as a Schedule One drug. According to the Drug Enforcement Agency, substances are classified as a Schedule One drug if they meet certain qualifications. For example, if they're listed with no medicinal use and if they have a potential for misuse and high abuse. Heroin, bath salts, and ecstasy are all listed as Schedule One drugs. No doctor is going to prescribe you heroin because of the back pain because you just fell down the steps last week. However, I find it interesting that THC is listed as a Schedule I drug. Now, Biden and his administration are working on making THC a Schedule III drug. However, it was classified because it apparently has no medicinal use. And the more that we do research into THC, and now that it is legalized, we realize that there are actually many medicinal effects with marijuana. Now that we've taken a look at the problem, I'd like to take a look at some of the causes. And the first one is the potential for injury and the potential for misuse and abuse. According to Heather Stringer, she has her master's in social work and psychology, and she's also the author for the American Psychological Association. She says that psychedelics temporarily alter a person's perceptions, and this is because of their disassociated state. Objects may appear closer than what they actually are. You can go to put a glass on a table, drop it, you step on glass, you hurt yourself. 
you completely miss a step and you fall down the stairs. You have this disassociated state as if when you are consuming alcohol. You're unaware of your surroundings. You think something's closer than it actually is. And this is when injury happens. This could also be due to a lack of education. According to the Berkeley Center for the Science of Psychedelics, they say that lack of education leads to poor knowledge and limited information. And this is true for anything, not just psych psychedelic substances. If you are not informed, you have limited information on whatever it is that that person is talking about. Did you know that in or Oregon and Colorado, psychedelic substances are legal for medicinal use if you use them at an authorized facility? Colorado right now is in the process of drafting regulations to make psychedelics legal for recreational use, but it is in the works. And currently there are three states where psychedelic use is currently decriminalized. I also like to think that knowledge is power. Um, we can take a look at this chart here from MindMend, which is a guide to responsible psychedelic use. They write a whole bunch of different articles on the benefits of psychedelics. If we take a look at the bottom of the screen, we see LSD and mushrooms. They are completely illegal. Psychedelic substances are illegal in the United States. But we can also see that the only harm that you're going to occur from taking these substances is injuring yourself. However, if we take a look at the very top of the list, alcohol, which is legal for anybody over the age of 21, not only has the potential to cause you harm, but an even greater harm to others. You could get behind the wheel of a car and not only injure yourself or kill yourself, there's a higher potential that you are going to injure and maybe even kill others. Now that we've taken a look at the causes of this problem, let's go ahead and take a look at a, po a potential solution. What we need to do is maximize benefits, but we also need to reduce risks. And the way that we can do this is with controlled, safe environments with trained professionals. And according to Heather Stringer again, she says that by eliminating the risk of injury, we can strive to provide benefits to users without potential consequences. If you are in a safe room, think of like a psych ward, how you have the pillow walls and the pillow floors. If you are taking a psychedelic substance that has been given to you, there's no potential for you to take more than what you were prescribed. There is a very minimal chance that you are going to cause any injury to yourself and an even lesser risk that you're going to cause injury to other people. And under the rare circumstance that something could potentially somehow go wrong, there is a trained professional there to help you. Now that we've taken a look at a solution to this problem, let's go ahead and address the opposition. And I'm going to prove to you why they're wrong. I hear time and time again, psychedelics have no benefits. They were made illegal for a reason. And this is not true. There are numerous health benefits to psychedelics. I think of anxiety and depression. Mental illness is a huge problem that we're having in our country. Addiction, obesity, certain cancers. These are all things that psychedelics have the potential to assist with. And according to David Nutt, he's a neuropsychopharmacologist. He says that psychedelics, when used responsibly and in these controlled settings, they can offer profound benefits for not only mental health, but your overall well-being. I also hear psychedelics are addictive, that they're, they're the, the highly addictive substance. Psychedelics are bad. And again, this is not true. Psychedelics do not lead to dependence or addiction. And according to Mason Marks and Glenn Cohen, their Harvard alumni, they say that dependence refers to a physical reliance on a drug whereas addiction refers to a behavioral change to continue taking the drug. Psychedelics do not lead to dependence or addiction. This is a myth, and this is super controversial. Now that I've talked to you about the problem at hand, that psychedelics are not legal and have not been for quite a while, I then talked to you about the cause of this problem, and this could be due to that potential for injury or a lack of education. I then proposed a solution. We need to maximize benefits while also reducing risks. And then I address the opposition and I prove to you why they are wrong. My dad struggled with mental illness and my dad is no longer here. He could have had the opportunity to consume a psychedelic drug and maybe that would have helped for him. We need to realize that the world is evolving. The world is changing. And with each passing day, we are gaining greater knowledge as the United States. It's time for us to open our eyes. It's time for us to 
to make a change. It's time for us to stand up for what's right. And it's time for us to have a